Okay, I'm back. <laughs> I got cut off, but I did want to finish um, sharing some insight that I've learned um, while writing um, to be able to bless you all. So there was one question that said that they feel as though when they write, they keep writing the same thing over and over. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> they keep writing the same thing over and over again. When it comes to writing, what you have to understand is some writing is for you specifically um, and some writing may be for others. So you have to, I will always encourage you to write everything, but when it comes to publishing, when it comes to putting information out on social media, listen, let me, virtuous, let me tell you how much I write. This is going to sound, I, I'm literally a scribe. So I literally have about 15 types of journals, types of journals. So I have my daily journal. I have a scripture journal. I have my prophecy journal. I have my revelation journal. I have my poetry journal. I have a journal for when I read books, notes that I get from books. I have my sermon journal, which is the notes that I take when I'm listening to a sermon. I have my personal sermon journal, <laughs> which are the sermons that God gives me himself. Um, what are the other journals that I have? Um, I can't think of the other ones right now, but I have that many types of journals and that's not all of them. But when it comes to journaling, different journals are for different things. So it's okay that you write a lot. I have, okay, so for my sermon journals, when I take notes in church, for that I use composition notebooks because comp composition notebooks, the pages are sewn in. So I don't have to worry about those pages falling out. Um, for, give me one moment. Okay, I'm back. So this, this is my prophecy journals. And my prophecy journals, I write in red. So whenever I get a prophecy, I write it in this journal. Um, this, oh, this is another prophecy journal. Um, this, this is my poem journal. So I just, I have different types of journals. One more second. Okay, so this is my, my everyday journal. And I fill at least two of these up a year. Um, this, when I say I have a sermon journal, so I do sermon journals two ways. If I go to a conference, I will have one journal that I just write everything in so it looks like scribbling, like I'm the only one that can read that journal. But then when I get home, I will then rewrite the whole sermon. And my sermon journals are color coded. So the notes are in blue. Um, no, the notes are in black. The scripture is in blue and if there is a prophetic word release that'll be in red so that's how I do those journals and then if I go to a conference I will get a composition notebook specifically for that conference and all my notes from that particular conference 
will go in that journal. So I've been, every sermon, like this, this penmanship isn't the greatest because this is me writing really quick, trying to get everything down. I have every sermon that I listen to and every conference that I listen to from 2007 to 2012 documented. And when I do sermon journals, this is kind of a funny story. Um, my, I used, I, I write just, I just can't, I can't help it. It's a, it's a part of me. But um, I remember one time the Holy Spirit challenged me and I would take notes in church. I would rewrite the scriptures, but I would just say like Luke six thirty three. but I wouldn't write the scripture out. I would just write the chapter and the verse. So one day the Holy Spirit challenged me and said, when you do your journals, write out the scriptures. And I was like, okay. I ended up going to a service the next day, if not the same day. And I tell you, that lady gave at least 50 scriptures. I looked up like, for real God, you, wait, you tell, you told me to write out all these scriptures and this lady just quoted 50, but I had to make a decision. I had to make a decision. Don't I, I am almost like a spiritual stenographer. I really, I probably get 85 to 90% of what is said just from hearing. I know it's a gift. Um, but then the Lord really, um, no, I write sloppy at work or at church. And then when I get home, I rewrite everything. No, I don't try to do it nice and cute when I'm in church or in the service. Um, it's when I get home that I transfer everything over. But then the Holy Spirit took it to a whole nother level when I joined Crusaders Church with Apostle John Eckhart. One summer, Apostle John got stuck in the book of Isaiah. It would take me a whole week to transcribe a Sunday morning service because I, I disciplined myself to literally write every scripture that was mentioned. Yes, he is. I had to write every scripture that was mentioned. So I was really being stretched, but people wonder, how did you get so much word in you? How do you know so much of the Bible? How are you so familiar with the scriptures? From doing this, studying to show myself approved. That's how you get a strong foundation in the word of God. Did y'all have any other questions? <laughs> I, I never really talk about my journaling. So um, that, that's how you get it. That's how you get it. It's, it's, it's a great way to study. Um, it takes a lot of discipline, but I'm a, I'm a scribe. So <laughs> I, can't, I can't help it. I can't help but write. I constantly keep a pen in my hand. I'm constantly writing. I have to write. I can't, I, I got the, I can't help it when it comes to writing. <laughs> I'm glad that this, you, this blessed you all. But yes, I have different types of journals. Now, the other thing, like when I say I write everything, if I'm in this journal, everything goes in this journal. Um, opening it, just open your Bible. Um, it depends on what you're dealing with. I love the gospels. That's always a great place to start. And also reading a Psalms every day and a Proverbs every day is a good way to start as well. Um, in this journal, in my five subject notebooks, I put everything, but sometimes like Elijah's list will have a really good post. So I used to write those out all the time, but they became too much sometimes. So sometimes I'll just print those out. Like, see, I'll just print it out and staple it in my journal. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Hey, Shauna Kay. 
Any other questions? I know no, most people, I haven't really had all these questions, so I'm loving it. <laughs> I've been a scribe all my life. You couldn't keep up with their emails. I'm not sure. Um, yeah, I've been, I've been writing all my life. Uh, the prophetic scribe, the poetry part, I did not know that was a gift. Um, I actually just used to be, a, if you gave me a title in 10 minutes, I would have a poem for you. That's just, I thought everybody could do it. I didn't realize it was a gift. Um, a book can turn into a script, but script writing is different from book writing. For my dreams, I, I, I have... I don't have a specific journal just for dreams, but there is a, sp a particular industry that God has called me to. So whenever I have dreams about people in that industry, I have a specific journal for that. But I do know that some people have a separate, um, did any of my journals turn into books? They will. They're on their way. <laughs> They are on their way because my personal journal, I have been journaling since 2006. So that's over 10 years worth of journals. Yeah, it's a whole lot in there. And I mean, if I'm, I, I, like, if I'm on the phone with friends and they say something, that goes in the journal. If I'm watching a television show and something sticks out to me as a powerful statement, that goes in the journal. I write everything. You never know when you'll use it. Any other questions? I'm loving this. Thank you for releasing the hearts. <laughs> oh, my book. The way my book happens. So this is my book. And I'm actually, I haven't announced this yet, but I am actually, um, re my book is being redesigned and reformatted and it'll be released um, in the next month. So I have a new design and a new book coming out, but this is my book, The Beauty of Holiness. Um, the, this part of the title is changing, but I'll keep that as a surprise. So currently it says A Practical Guide to Life Relationships and, and Inner Beauty. Um, no, you can, mm, I don't know. I can't answer that question. <laughs> um, the way my book happened, uh, my, I had a cousin, thank you. I had a cousin, <laughs> I had a cousin who, um, who invited me to come and speak at, I actually self-published, spring for, springing forth, I self-published. Um, I actually had a cousin, one of my cousins, I had 25 first cousins, and one of my cousins called me and invited me to come and speak at her church. And I thought I was going to be a part of a panel. And I found out that I was actually the keynote speaker. I was, that was my first time actually doing ministry outside of my church. And um, we, she, I asked her what the title was. And I'm, the, fir the first time she said, let it do what it do. Yeah, she a little hood. <laughs> and I was just like, okay, I'm a preacher on let it do what it do. We're going to have to... We're going to have to figure that out. So then the next day she called and she said that while she was cleaning, she heard the Lord say the beauty of holiness. And she called me back and she gave me that title. At the time, I, I was a makeup artist. So the way the Holy Spirit gave me my book, well, so the Holy Spirit, the way he gave me my sermon was to help women. To Most women know uh, what a makeup artist does. But many times when people come to get their makeup done, they really are so focused on the color and the look that they don't really focus on their skin. And no matter how good of an artist, the make, no matter how good of an artist you have, you have to take the makeup off and you have to become comfortable in your skin. So the way the Holy Spirit gave it to me was to teach women 
or show them the parallel of taking care of their natural skin as well as taking care of your spiritual skin. So in the natural, we have five skincare categories, your dry, oily, combination, sensitive, or normal. In the realm of the spirit, you're in one of those categories as well. You can be spiritually oily, spiritually dry, spiritually normal, spiritually combination, or spiritually sensitive. Um, Regardless of what skin type you're in, in the natural, or in the realm of the spirit, you have to have a cleansing regimen. So I teach you how to take care of your natural skin, and then I teach you how to take care of your spiritual skin. And this parallel was throughout the whole sermon. But when I got home from Detroit, when I was back in Chicago and I got home from Detroit, I had so many notes on this topic. This was back in 2009. I did not know that it was going to be a book, but because I had so many notes, the Lord began to breathe on it and made it larger and larger and larger. So at the end of 2009, I put all the information that I had about the skin care. Awesome. I put all the information that I had about the skin types in the natural and in the spirit. Um, I'll let you all know that virtuous. So then when January came, I started, I would wake up in the morning and I would hear these different titles. Like you're waiting on Boaz, but are you Ruth? Tiffany versus Walmart. Truth versus deception. Um, are you a fragrance or are you an odor? And when the topics would come, they came at different times and I would just sit at my computer and I would just type my thoughts on those topics. And the thing about it is when it's time for me to write, the Holy Spirit wakes me up at three, four o'clock in the morning and I wake up like it's three or four o'clock in the afternoon and I just pull out my computer and I start typing. That's how my book was being processed. So I would type on those topics, but at the time they were just interesting. I thought they were catchy, but I didn't know that they would be the title of the chapters of my book. So then um, as time went on, my book, I keep a journal in my purse. Yes, I keep a journal in my purse. Um, But as time went on, I thought I was done with the book because I had the first part with the skin types. And then I had the second part with the interesting titles, but then the Holy spirit blew it out the water when he was, when he said to me, put the women in the Bible in the skincare categories. Now, most times when we read the Bible, the women aren't described physically but we can see where they are spiritually. So we can see someone in the Bible being spiritually oily. We can see someone in the Bible being spiritually dry. We can see a woman in the Bible being spiritually sensitive. So then the weave (laughs) came in and I added the, I have 10 women in the Bible and two of them are in each of the skincare categories. So that's how my book was birthed. Now, mind you, in the middle of this, I'm writing poems. I had no idea that some of the poems that I wrote will be a part of the book. So all of, so my book wasn't at a one time, I just sat at my computer and everything came together. My book was actually a journey. It was actually a process. And what made the book even the more powerful is my father did not know how much I journaled. Um, but one time when he came to Chicago, he bought the journals of my grandmother and my great grandmother. So this gift that I have is actually an inheritance. Um, it's not, it's not something that just fell out the sky. It's something that was generational. It's legacy. Correct. It's legacy, but I didn't know it. But in 2014, in 2014, I opened up my grandmother's journal and I literally almost fell out the bed because my grandmother is deceased. She's been deceased for some time now and no one in the family even really knew that she wrote. So I pull out this journal and I'm just flipping the pages and then I see in her handwriting where it says, Being apostolic means we believe in the teaching of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. 
The apostolic woman believes, teaches, and lives this according to the word of God. She should be an example of the standards of the church of our Lord Jesus Christ. All women should be able to look at her and see a pattern that they can follow. She is obedient to the word of God and she is willing to assist in the service of God wherever she is needed. She holds a high spiritual and social position in the kingdom of God. She is polite, refined, well-mannered, and above all, she is chosen for salvation by God and eternal life. Walk in the beauty of holiness. Talk in the beauty of holiness. That is my grandmother, Althea Allen. I later found out that my grandmother was to speak at a conference and something happened and she was never able to speak. We believe that these are her notes from when she was supposed to speak. So although she did not speak in life, she has been able to speak even in death. So that is how my book came about. And I can... I can say that it was frustrating because there were times that I felt as though my book should have already have been published. There were times that I felt as though my book was already ready, but it wasn't. Um, It was the timing of the Lord um, when my book was to be released. Because if you see right here, that forward by Jane Hammond, I didn't meet Jane Hammond till 2014 and it was in two wait yeah I met Jane Hammond in 2014 and in 2015 um, is when I was able to have a conversation with her and she said that she would write the forward of my book so if I would have published the book in 2009 that wouldn't have been in my book also in 2009 I wasn't I wasn't fully engaged yet as a member at Crusaders Church. Um, uh, Prophet Jane Hammond, um, she had her and her husband, her grand, her, her father-in-law is Bill Hammond, who was known pretty much as the apostle of the prophetic. Um, another thing is Apostle John Eckhart wrote an endorsement on the back of this book. Um, in 2009, I had just joined Crusaders Church, so to have asked him for an endorsement probably wouldn't have worked, but being that while I was at Crusaders for the three years that I was there, I took every class that they had within three years, and I was an altar worker, and when I moved to California, I was released as a daughter of the house, so all of that had to be in place in order for this to be in place. So my book was a journey. Um, Everyone's process is different. You really have to partner with the Holy Spirit um, to know the cadence of your book. And even though this book took time to publish, I know that the next books I have coming out, it's not going to take that long. (laughs) But this one... Because the other thing I can say, honestly, look at the name of my book. The title of my book is called The Beauty of Holiness. I had to become my book. It could not just be words on a cover. It had to be a lifestyle that I lived. Because when I speak, when I share, this has to be something that people can feel that they can agree with. And God had to birth me in order for this book to have the power, the impact, and fulfill the purpose that he originally created it to be. So that's why there was no rush because a lot of times I was not ready for what I'm ready for now. Okay. (laughs) So the book was a journey um, within itself and in God's timing, that's when it was released. And I'm going to say this, there was a, um, there was a word that came out yesterday about writers and someone had a vision of people writing books. And one thing that really stuck out to me in the vision, she said, as people were releasing books, the covers of the books were a compass. The covers of the book were a compass. 
which meant it had a specific direction and a particular people that it was supposed to meet. So for some of you, don't get discouraged if you've been working on a project for a period of time. Sometimes it's not that you're not ready. He's trying to get your audience ready. He's trying to get your platform clear. He's trying to get the airways clear. So when you come on, some things you shouldn't have to deal with. It's just going to be a smooth catapult. You know, you don't want to be catapulted into mess. (laughs) <laughs> so you, my, one of a scripture that I have um, been sharing with a lot of people, you know, we have to make sure that we allow patience to have its perfect work in us, not on us, not around us, in us, in us. So when you're writing a book, you have to allow patience to have its perfect work. That doesn't mean be lazy. That doesn't mean be disobedient, but allow patience to work. Because honestly, uh, I got Apostle or Prophet Jane Hammond on the front of my book. I got Apostle John Eckhart on the back of my book. This is the first book I've ever written. That's not normal. I know it's not normal, but this is the favor and the grace of God because of a bigger picture that I'm still, um, that's still being unveiled to me. So for some of you, it's not that it's not his timing, but there may be people that he wants to connect you with to help usher you to platforms and to places that you can't get to on your own. So, (laughs) oh, thank you so much. So those are my words um, of encouragement (laughs) to you all. I I didn't expect to say all of that, but I pray that, um, oh, thank you. I pray that it blessed you. And when the new, oh, I'm so excited about the new cover and the revisions. Um, When that comes out, I will certainly do a blast and let you all know. Um, Please go to my website, MashaniAllen.com. Subscribe to, yep, Apostle John said it was the year of the Bard. Subscribe to my website. I also want to encourage you all to go to YouTube, type in Mashani Allen and subscribe to my YouTube page. Um, especially if you, if you're new, there is so much content that I have on my YouTube page and there is so much more that will be coming in 2017. There are a lot of new things that I'm going to be introducing. Um, and much of it will be on YouTube. So, um, join me there so you can be the first one to get it when I upload it. Um, are there any other questions? Any additional questions? <laughs> are we good? Everybody happy? You guys are writing, 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 writing. And for those of you who missed the first scope, again, the month of December is the month of dealings, is the month of downloads, but it's also going to be the month of decisions. So make sure whatever decisions you make, choose wisely. <laughs> And with that, since no one has any additional questions, I'm going to let you all, do I do writing activations? You know, that's a really, that's a really good question. I know how to, I have it. Do you give, ha, 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 do I give a word of prophecy live? <laughs> I can. <laughs> I can. I can. Your name is, is it Merlene? Am I pronouncing it right? Okay. So Merlene, I hear the Lord say that this is a season that I'm calling you to come up higher, higher in me. It's not that you haven't been in my presence, but know that there are new things that I want to download on the inside of you. The Lord says that this is a season that I come for that which clutters. I come for that which confuses. I come from for that which upsets. The Lord says this is a season that I call your joy to be full. I call your faith to remain and I call you to stand strong even in the midst of 
of some difficult times and situations. So know that my arm is with you. Know that your back is being strengthened to be made stronger and know that that which you have done in secret, I will begin to reward you openly. The Lord says, this is a season that I call you to a new level of obedience with me and a new level of obedience in me. For as you obey me, you will begin to see blessings. You will begin to see manifestation after manifestation after manifestation. And the Lord says that I'm also going to do a new thing in your mouth. I'm going to cause your word to be seasoned with a level of wisdom like you have never known before. As you continue to cry out and stay in the secret place, know that I will begin to download wisdom. I will begin to download revelation. I will even begin to download I will begin to download answers for you are one who has asked a lot of questions and you've wondered when you will get your answers. The Lord says, this is the season of answering. This is the season where I answer your questions. This is the season where I even answer the questions of your heart, the secret things of your heart that you haven't even expressed or revealed to other people. So the Lord says, no daughter, that this is a great season for you. This is a great time for you. No Know that you are one who have been through a lot and sometimes people have looked at you and wondered, has, has it been in vain? And the Lord says, no, it has not been in vain. And watch me work a work in you that will bring blessing, hope, and restoration to many, says God. Amen. <laughs> Please pray for me. Is that... Is that Gina or Jean? Am I, is it Jean? Am I pronouncing your name wrong? Is it Jean or Gina? Can you let me know? <laughs> Jenny? Is it Jenny? I don't like to say. Okay, Jenny. So, Jenny, I hear the Lord say that as you as you abide with me and allow me to abide in you, know that I will begin to dislodge, I will begin to distract, and I will even begin to unveil that which has tried to bring you confusion and cause you to be stuck and stale in situations. The Lord says that you are one that many come to um, for help, but you, they don't realize how much you need. But the Lord says, I come to restore. I come to even um, provide you with the insight and the revelation for you to make the right decisions. Yes, some of the decisions that you have to make are hard decisions, but even with hard decisions, wisdom will allow you to transition well. So no daughter, as you continue to lay before me, as you continue to pray and know that one of the major keys for you in this season will be worship. As you begin to worship the weights and the, and the worries will begin to just fall off of you. As you begin to worship, it will cause a greater degree of intimacy with me, says the Lord. And know that in that level of intimacy, you will find the peace that your soul and your heart and your spirit has been longing for. So Jenny, know that this is a season where I come with answers. This is a season where I come to clear the clutter. This is a season where I I allow you to finally get on that path that you have been seeking and searching for, says God. Okay. Amen. <laughs> Yvonne. <laughs> Yvonne. Um, Yvonne. Yvonne, I hear the Lord say that, daughter, that this is a season that I come to restore your soul. It's like I see your heart and your heart has pieces 
um, where some are still connected together, but there are other places of your heart where um, you have been fragmented. But the Lord says like a father, I come and I pick up every piece and I bring a level of restoration to your heart. I bring a level of restoration to your mind. I bring a level of restoration to your spirit and I bring a level of restoration to your emotions. The Lord says that in this season, you will get to know me in a level of peace that you have never known before. And the Lord says that the question marks that you have had about yourself, the question marks that you have had about your purpose, the question marks that you have had about my will for your life. The Lord says, I come to to shift that question mark. I come to make it plain to you. I cause it to no longer be something that you waver in. The Lord says, I bring a level of stability to your mind. I bring a level of stability to your emotions and I bring a level of stability even to your spirit. The Lord says, I even come after the words that have been spoken regarding you. I come after the words that have been spoken that have berated you. I come after the words that have even been spoken to destroy you you and know that I will stand tall for you. I will be your rear guard. I will be your shield. And in this season, many battles that you fought in your own strength, you will now learn to lean and depend on me for I will be your Jehovah Gabor, says God. Amen. Okay. Are, are you asked? Okay, Verna, are you asking me to pray for you regarding a church in training? You're welcome, Eve. Okay, Verna. Father God, I, I lift up Verna before you and I pray that you orchestrate her steps, that you lead her to the right place. And Verna, I hear the Lord say that you are definitely a woman of wisdom. You are definitely a woman of knowledge, but you are also one who has cried out for the more. The Lord says that you are one that some question and wonder why do you want more because there's already a lot in you. But the Lord says that hunger is something that I put on the inside of you for there are still a lot of years left of life for you. And there's a lot that I have for you to pour into generations, into generations of both men and women. So the Lord says, I will even begin to visit you in dreams and I will begin to speak to you in your night season to give you the clarity, to give you the understanding and to give you the directions and the instructions that you need to get into that place of promise to receive the harvest that I promised to you years ago, says God. You're welcome. Amen. (laughs) Diana, did I say that right? Okay, Diana, I hear the Lord say that this is a season that I mantle you with your identity. You are one that many have tried to um, speak of who you are. Many have tried to cloak you with something that is not me. But the Lord says, this is the year that I cloak you with the identity that is in the book that I have written regarding your life. And know that I will begin to move the shame. I will begin to move the shackles. I will begin to move the, remove the, move the disappointment. I will begin to even move the conflict that has come at you in ways that have challenged you and caused you to question your very existence and your very being, but know that you are my daughter and I will cause you to know me as father in a fresh way and a new way. And I will begin to mend. I will begin to heal. I will begin to reveal for there is a season that I will have to unveil you says God. <laughs> he surely has. You are so welcome. You are so welcome. You're so welcome. 
Okay. You're so welcome. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Um, Cynthia. Oh, okay. Let me do Cynthia first. <sighs> Cynthia. Cynthia, I hear the Lord say that you are a precious one that I have caused to be hidden. Um, you are one that many have tried to connect with. You are one that many have tried to train. You are one that many have tried to put their stamp on. But the Lord says, I have made you like oil to where anything that is not like me, it cannot stick to you. And that has brought you frustration. Um, that has caused you to even question the gift and the graces on your life. But know that it was me for I could not allow allow you to be one that will be tainted. I could not allow you to be one that is defiled. I could not allow you to even be one that was used and abused by men. The Lord says that I have you in my secret place and I am cultivating you. I am strengthening you. I am purifying you and I am sanctifying you for a work that will go even beyond your years, says God. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Um, there was one more person uh, who said, <laughs> that's who it is. Is it Shanita? Did I pronounce that right? Shanita, okay. Shanita, I hear the Lord say that you are one who has had doors open, but you've also had doors closed and you've wondered why. You, it, the, 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 when the doors close, it calls you to question you. It calls you to question your gift and it calls you to question if there was something wrong with you. But the Lord says, I am the one who opens doors and I'm also the one who closed doors for you. I had to close some doors due to the mindsets and the motives of men. Know that in this season, as doors begin to open to you, they will be pure doors. They will be doors that will, that will honor you because you are one that has not always been honored and you are one that has not always been understood. And the Lord says certain battles, certain trials, and certain situations do not have to be your portion. Allow me to to open the pure doors and even allow me to open the mature doors for you are one that is seasoned that and seasoned in a way that others do not understand. So therefore they don't fully value the gift that I placed on the inside of you. But the Lord says in this season, as you continue to do that, which you have been doing for years, know the doors that I open to you will be pure and mature, says the Lord. Oh, my phone is about to die. Amen. 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 <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So Father, let me just let me just seal it in prayer. Father God, I just thank you for every person that is on this scope and I thank you for every person that will even come to this scope. I pray that they will have the pen of a ready writer. Father, I pray that the rivers of revelation will begin to flow through them. I pray for the rivers of understanding to begin to flow for them. Father God, I pray for your fire, your glory, your anointing to be released to them that whatever 
whatever they begin to write, it won't just be words, but it'll be your presence. It'll be your power. It'll be your anointing. Father God, I thank you that they will write words that will break yokes. I thank you that they will write words that will cause shackles to break. I thank you that they will write words that will even cause strongholds to be shattered. Father God, I pray that as they sit at their computers and as they pull out their pens, Father God, I pray for the anointing of God to hit them. And I pray for it to be a pure flow. I pray for it to be a fresh flow. Father God, I even pray that you begin to deal with them and begin to purge them of anything that will be defiled. Purge them of anything that is mixture. Purge them of anything that is lukewarm. That way when they release what they release, it will come forth pure. It will come forth strong. It will come forth with power. And I pray for a spirit of humility to rest upon all of them. And that when the accolades and the acknowledgements begin to come, that they will not take it for themselves, but they will give you all the glory in Jesus name. Amen. Okay. So with that, (laughs) I'm going to let you all go. Um, I have all of my information in my Periscope um, bio. Uh, Thank you all so much for joining. For those of you who are new, I normally don't even scope on Tuesdays. I do my Periscopes on um, Wednesdays and I'll be doing a quick scope at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And I will also be doing my prayer scope on this Wednesday. Um, And the prayer scope is actually, we're going to be praying scriptures of obey and obedience. So I pray that you all join me um, as we continue to allow the Lord to download. We allow the Lord to deal so we can make right decisions. You all be blessed and I'll be talking with you tomorrow.